Welcome to another edition of your Boxer Brief. I'm Petty Officer Jared Schwartz. Coming up, we'll have your latest news, weather, and sports. But first, a quick note about the smallpox vaccines. Don't forget to wear bandages to cover the vaccine site and wear sleeves down to cover the bandage. Above all else, wash your hands, wash your hands. Remember to dispose of your bandage in the red biohazard bags located in each of the birthing heads. Do not scratch the vaccination site. If you do scratch it, stop what you are doing and wash your hands. When you work out in the gym, you are required to use a waterproof bandage and wear sleeves to cover the vaccination site. Any questions, contact the medical department. Sometimes people like to talk about a ship being one big family, but here on Boxer, seaman Veronica Mamina found the real thing. Siblings rarely get the opportunity to work together in the Navy. However, aboard the amphibious assault ship USS Boxer, the Quarles brothers do. When Master Chief Boatswain's mate DeAndre Quarles received his orders to Boxer, he had mixed feelings. When I, when I first got my orders, I was really excited, but to be on, you know, on the same note there, I was a little bit nervous because uh, it was kind of like having my older brother watching over me, and I was like afraid that I was going to do something wrong to disappoint him, because really I have a lot of respect for him, and I look up to him. But it was definitely, you know, it was definitely something good, and I was happy about it to be able to serve with my brother. But I was worried that am I going to be able to do a good job in front of him? So, you know, it was a little bit of my concern. Similar to when they were children, DeAndre's older brother, Lieutenant Commander Leon Quarles, gave him brotherly advice on a possible career opportunity. When I saw his name on the uh, promotion list, I asked him, well, uh, if you're looking for orders, why don't you take orders to the boxer? And he said, that's a good idea. And it kind of took me by surprise that he said, that's a good idea. I said, okay, well, if that's a good idea, well, then I'm, uh, I'm going to talk to the, the command master chief. And so, and I, and I told him, I said, well, the command is interested in you coming out. He said, okay, good. I'm ready to come out and I'm ready to deploy. The younger Quarles brother reported just in time to make it for Boxer's scheduled deployment. Even though they both have busy schedules, they're just around the corner from each other. Aboard USS Boxer, I'm Seaman Veronica Mamina. In other news today, the 13th of October marks the U.S. Navy's 238th birthday, beginning with the establishment of our Navy in 1775 and continuing with our current fleet, standing the test of war several times over, the Navy has stood the watch for more than two centuries. America will continue to press on to defend freedom and democracy around the world. We'll have some of today's Navy birthday highlights in our next installment. Up next, our man on the street, Seaman Connor Minto, has another installment in his quest to familiarize himself with the ship and get his ESWAS. Thanks, MC3. CTR-1 here is going to give me some emergency egress training. Now, an egress, as we all know, is a bird in the Heron family. And a majestic one at that. Isn't that right, CTR-1? No, that's an egret. Okay, well... That makes much more sense. I didn't really understand why I would need emergency bird training. Let's do this. Oh my god, Burling's on fire! Get out, get out! All right, that's one block. Now one more block. Get, get, sir! Oh, my God. So you got to make it home, man. Get that. All right. Go. Nice. That, oh. <laughs> he sucked. Emergency egress complete. Back to you, MC3. Um, thanks for that report. Seaman Minto continues to improve his shipboard skills every day. Let's pause for a quick message. We'll be right back. Watch where you going, man. What do you mean where I'm going, bro? You, you know what I said? Watch where you going, oh, man. Oh, what, bro? What's up? What's up, dude, man? I don't know. What are you doing, bro? 
Oh, hey, what are you guys doing? Why are you worried about it? Mind your business. Yo, get out of here. We got this. Mind my business. This is my business. Come on, let's go. We're going right now. I'm not going nowhere. Come on. No, nope, you're coming. Let's go. Welcome back. Up next, Petty Officer Brian Jeffries has sports. Good evening. It's your friendly neighborhood sports guy, MC3 S Dub A Dub Jeffries. What you mean I don't have to get my warfare designation? I earned them, and I feel like people deserve the right to know. Just, just let me do me. Hey, uh, are we gonna are we gonna cut that out? Cause I gotta run it back. Okay, you chop it. Alright, cool. Okay. So before I was so rudely interrupted, I was about to take a glance around the athletic world and give my completely biased opinion. At the top of the news in Major League Baseball, our boys of summer are getting some postseason action. Well, not my O's this time around. They got edged out of the playoffs by the damn Yankees. Whatever. Perhaps the most exciting of the matchups was between the Atlanta Braves and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Just as the Dodgers clinched a playoff berth at the end of September, they are the first team in major leagues to advance to the next round. A serious letdown for ATL fans who watched their team win the best record in the MLB only to be ousted from the playoffs early. That's tough. Moving right along, I have to go ahead and move into the exciting week of NFL. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> oh wait, yes I do. I've gotten wind that certain people would like to hear more updates about the Patriots. CO. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. So I'll give you these updates. They lost. Didn't even score a touchdown. Now Drew Brees' consecutive TD streak is safe. There. Talked about the Patriots. Check. Speaking of Drew Brees, what a difference a year makes. And a coach. After missing the playoffs last year in the absence of Sean Payton, they have completely turned things around with a perfect record through five weeks. The NFC South is looking real suspect right now. For all those Atlanta fans, I feel for you, but I'm going to go ahead and give the division to the Saints. And if y'all lose next week to the Tampa Bay Bucks, your season isn't going past week 17. On to a team that probably will go past week 17, the Seattle Seahawks were dealt their first loss of the season. It was an uncharacteristic game for the stout Seattle defense giving up the most points since 2011. And then, Andrew Luck and the Colts offense were able to manufacture drives when it counted, including an 86-yard final drive with a two-point conversion that proved to be enough to win. Those, co those Colts are turning heads, putting together impressive victories over Seattle and San Francisco earlier this year. I can see them making some noise come late this season. Okay, there's much more I could touch on. That's all the time I have. Back. Wait, wait, wait. I have to talk about my Ravens. We beat the Dolphins in Miami. Pretty impressive win, I say. Okay, that's it. Back to you, MC3. Thanks, MC3 Jeffries. Up next, Petty Officer Myra Knight sits down with Airman Joni Bills in an installment we like to call My Point of View. Hi, welcome to My Point of View. I'm MC3 Myra Knight, and we're here with Airman Bills to talk about her point of view. Hi, Airman Bills. Hi, I'm Tiffany Knight. Um, can you talk to us about what it feels like to run under an aircraft still while the rotors are still spinning? Well, when I first was learning how to be on deck and running up the, under the blades, it was definitely scary at first. But then over time, you just get used to it and you learn the safety guidelines. And it's definitely still thrilling. And adrenaline rush as well. What is your favorite part about your job? My favorite part of my job is definitely just being out on deck and being out in the sun and to experience the waves and everything that you see around the ship. Can you describe the climate on the flight deck? Well, since we left for deployment, the climate has definitely been crazy. We've gone through storms. We've had uh, Thunder Condition 1 where we had a runoff the flight deck and some definitely wet boot days. Mm -hmm. 
can you tell us what do you miss the most about home um, other than your family of course what I miss most about home is just being at the beach in San Diego and just having relaxing Saturdays and Sundays that sounds good it it sounds does. like fun <laughs> what motivates you to keep you going through your day um, my motivation is definitely that we're my job as AB is part of a bigger mission than what we see every day. Like my small part is just chalking and chaining the aircraft, but this aircraft has a huge mission that takes the Marines on the bigger mission that the whole Navy has. So that's my motivation that just to keep going because I'm part, I'm a little piece in a big puzzle. That's awesome. Now I have a fun question for you. If you can travel through time, whether it be the future or the past, where would you go? If I could time travel, I'd probably go back and I don't know what year it is, but where they wore those big poofy dresses so I could wear a big poofy dress. Maybe like 18th century or even yes. before that? Yes, yeah, something like that. Okay, <laughs> that sounds interesting. All right, thank you Airman Bills for taking some time to talk to us. This has been your point of view. Yes. Thank you. Thanks MC3. Up next, Gunny Hoorah has your weather. Ra. Last week, we're talking about making rain in the gym. This week, we have a storm coming through. A storm of nutritional knowledge. How you eat and what you eat are essential to your daily performance. We have a few rules that we're gonna go by according with the Naval Operational Fitness Fueling Series. Can I have a pot? Let's come back to Earth, all right? One, choose the least processed forms of food, such as fruit, veggies, whole grains, and high fiber carbohydrates. Two. Choose a wide variety of colors for the biggest benefit. Three, include a lean protein source with each meal. Proteins are the building blocks for our bodies. Four, eat healthy fats, such as olive oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, and fish. Five, eat breakfast with every meal. It's gonna jumpstart your metabolism and get you going for the day. All right, it's gonna give you more energy and start you off right. Six, eat smaller portions and more often, evenly throughout the day. Like I've told you, your body is a finely tuned machine. Keep it maintained and fueled right, and you'll have a great time. Rah. Thanks, Gunny. Now that's a forecast I think we can all get behind. And now, a word from our fun boss. Fun. Well, that should just about do it for this week's show. If you have any stories or ideas on how we can improve, please keep them to yourself. We got this. As always, we leave you with our moment of green. Just a quick note before we go though, due to the congressional funding issues and government shutdown, some box or media services may slightly diminish or have interrupted. I'm MC3 Meyer Knight, and we're here to talk about. Okay, <laughs> it's like super chipped already. Mm -hmm. Let's tuck it in. Tuck it in. Hold on. That's all right. Okay. You're supposed to be working. It's research. I want this to be in the outtakes. MC1 Biller is the best LPO ever. Get him. He said, first he comes in. I know he, and he got like a, like a frog out in my throat and I had to get it out. But I think I just was like. <clears throat> small box vaccines. That up. Small box. Small. I think, this is, I think this is my good side. Well, we all know what the Patriots do after the players win the Super Bowl. They pause the Xbox and they go get a drink. Okay. Done? Done?